prices are increasing throughout the state. One city council member blames California policies for the rise in housing costs. Let's hear more on why he believes building more is actually hurting affordability. Eric Peterson, a city council member of Huntington Beach, told California insiders CMAC Karami that the more affordable housing projects the state builds, the less affordable housing becomes. Well, once you start building just one type of product, then that destroys the affordability because these people are charging $3,000 a month or $4,000 a month, and the people that used to have $1,200 a month rents said, hold it, why are we charging $1,200 when we're three blocks from the beach and they're up Beach Boulevard four miles? So they start raising, and it just it throws the balance off. A 2020 study by the UC Berkeley's Turner Center for Housing Innovation found that increasing wages, cost of supplies, development costs, and demand are all driving up the price of housing units. And according to the LA Times, some affordable housing projects cost the state nearly $1 million per apartment to build. Peterson says these high costs are also due to California's construction regulations. There's all these different things uh, whether it be Title 24 and electrical code or, or, you know, just environmental things that they want. I think if there weren't as many regulations that we had to meet as, you know, contractors, uh, it would bring down the cost of building. It's still going to be high in California, but it would bring down those costs um, to where uh, maybe make it a little more affordable. But Peterson says the push for affordable housing is not simply to build more housing units. In his city, affordable housing projects have become part of the city's green energy mission. We have a regional board, SCAG, the Southern California Association of Governments, and they used to deal with just traffic. Well, they've come to the conclusion that we need more housing, and the reason is not because of a lack of housing, but if you actually read their plan, it's to meet greenhouse gas emissions. He says fewer out-of-city commuters mean lower gas emissions. So it's, it's going back to that green agenda, and it's been going on for years. And when I was actually on SCAG, there was only a couple of us that would vote against it. But um, I don't think we should be building housing <laughs> based on greenhouse gases um, or commute times or anything. Despite the growing cost of building more units, cities across the state are passing new affordable housing proposals. The state is also allocating about $1.4 billion of the new $300 billion budget to the state's public colleges and universities. The goal is to increase affordable student housing for incoming students. Cynthia Kai, NTD News, California. Rankings for the best and not-so-best managed the cities in the country came out last week. While the city of the councilman we just heard from did exceptionally well, another major California city came in just one step away from last place. See if you can guess which one it was. The best and worst-run cities have been ranked for the year, and California's front-running city peaked at 21st place. That's according to research published last week by Wallet Hub. The findings were based on the quality of city services that leadership provided, as well as the city's budget per capita. The study analyzed 150 cities across the United States. Overall, Orange County's Huntington Beach led California at 21st place for best-run cities. But Huntington Beach also ranked first place in the whole country when only considering city services. San Diego ranked fourth place for services and 59th overall. Fremont also came in the top 10 for services but ranked 76th overall. Other major cities like Sacramento, Oakland, San Jose, and Los Angeles hung low on the overall list. But it was San Francisco that saw the lowest ranking in California and almost the nation at 149th place. It also tied with several other cities as having the highest long-term debt outstanding per capita. But San Francisco wasn't all bad, ranking 14th for services. Only Washington, D.C. was ranked worst at 150th place. As for the top three cities in the nation, those were Nampa, Idaho, neighboring Boise, Idaho, and Fort Wayne, Indiana. 
A Los Angeles City Councilman is drafting a policy to ban new gas stations. His goal is to encourage fossil fuel free transportation. Los Angeles City Councilman Paul Koretz is drafting a policy to end the construction of gas stations. He hopes to bring it to the council by the end of the year. Koretz said, we are ending oil drilling in Los Angeles. We are moving to all electric new construction and we are building toward fossil fuel free transportation. Last March, Pataluma in Sonoma County became the first city in the nation to ban new gas stations. Councilwoman Delinda Fisher authored the motion. She believes other cities will follow their lead. California Governor Gavin Newsom signed an executive order in September 2020 to phase out gas vehicles by 2035. Several bills limiting the use of fossil fuels have made their way through the legislature, even amid some pushback from Californians. Speaking of gasoline, prominent gas provider Chevron is selling its office headquarters in the Bay Area and setting up base somewhere else in California. It will also help employees to relocate to its Texas office. Chevron is planning to sell its Chevron Park campus in San Ramon and move to a new modern lease space in the same city. A Chevron spokesman informed NTD via email that the current real estate market provides the opportunity to right-size our office space to meet the requirements of our headquarters-based employee population. The company expects to move during the third quarter of 2023. The company says it also plans to shift some jobs to Texas. It will offer its San Ramon employees an option to relocate to Houston if they so choose. Chevron, which has a 140-year history, will stay headquartered in California. It has operations and partnerships throughout the state.